All right, this is going to be quick. I'm going to show you how I make a set of cornhole boards. Uh, if you're not familiar with cornhole, it's uh, the game where you've got two boards on opposite ends with holes in them, and you throw the bags full of corn, you try and get it in the hole. Everybody plays it, at least here in the States. I know we've got a lot of people overseas. I'm sure y'all play something over there. I don't know, you probably got a different name for it. But anyway, I'm going to show you how I make a set of cornhole boards. <laughs> For starters, I use oak half inch top boards. This is the actual board you'll be playing on. It's two feet across, four feet long. Uh, I don't know what that is in metric. Just guess at it, really. You're going to have a hole cut up in the top here. So I use oak for the top. It's a good solid hard board. And I don't, I don't build anything cheap, so I like to build it right. Then for the rails, the sides to make the box and give it some strength, I just use number one grade prime stud pine. It's a two, two inch by four inch, and I've got about four of those. Use that for the rails, use that to make the legs. I'll show you how to get everything set up and cut your pieces to fit and make the blanks, and then we'll get into decorating it later. All right, so I thought it would be a little bit of fun here if I just did this kind of in a British accent, you know, just did this little bit here. So what I'm going to do is I've got my two performers put up on my chopping, my chopping saw here, chopping, yeah, chop saw. Anyway, then I'm going to just nick the ends here a little bit so that it's not such a stock edge, you know what I'm saying? So that it'll be a nice smooth cut on the end. Then I've measured my boards. They're about 47 and 7 eighths of an inch long. I don't know what that is in metric, but anyway, at least I'm speaking the kings. Okay, so then I'll cut these and then I'll have two rails per board. So two times two is four, right? We've got to cut power on. I need to do that probably right. Alright, rock on. Now that's a smooth edge and I'll cut the four footless. In order to attach the top board to the side rails, I'm going to be using some little two inch wood screws. Uh, since if I just screwed these into the top, they would tear up the top surface and make it un unlevel and not smooth. Uh, I'm going to countersink these a little bit. Got a countersink bit. It's just a pilot point to set up for the actual uh, turned part of the screw and then it's got this head that kind of cuts in a divot for the screw head to be able to sit into a, almost a little pocket so that way the screw is buried beneath the surface a little bit and the top is not torn up so to do this I'm going to start with the first screw I don't want to sink it too much, but at the same time, I want to make sure that it's sunk enough to where I can come in on top of that and put in a little bit of putty on the top. Because this is going to be painted, if it was going to be stained, I would need to be able to sink this enough to put in the top of a wooden dowel, a little plug, and then sand that off smooth so it would be wood grain. and. and and all that, but this is going to get painted, so. And that's it. And then it just sits below the surface just like that. I'll come back and putty that in and sand it down smooth, and you'll never know there was a piece of hardware. But cornhole boards are all played out. Everybody's already done all that. You missed the whole cornhole market. Two more screws, and these boards will be together. Sorry about that. Anyway, as I was saying, one more screw. Uh, after that, I'll be measuring out to cut these holes. I'll show you how to do that next. Another fun part. Okay. I've got this. It's a piece of Tupperware. It is a perfect six inch diameter, which is the distance directly across at the widest point, which is a regulation cornhole size. Now, the center 
of your six inch cutout needs to be nine inches from the top to the center of the circle. So you can come in and make a mark there. And then directly in the middle, side to side, which this is 24 inch wide board, so we're going 12 inches. So I'll measure 12 inches, make a mark, nine inches, make a mark, draw a pretty dark little circle. And since this is somewhat see-through, I know that that center point that's already figured into my Tupperware can lay right on top of that. I'll be able to see the point through it. Then I draw around the circle. Then you take your drill with a, any size drill bit, honestly, half inch, five eighths, something like that. Drill a, inside the circle that you drew, but on the perimeter. And then a jigsaw, which is just a small saw that you can scroll with and make curves, and then cut that circle. So to do the legs, I need the legs to be able to fold down like that and then fold back out. Uh, I used a pattern where this angle was already figured for me and then I just cut a rounded shape on the top so that it has room to maneuver, <clears throat> clamped them in place, measured the distance from this point to this point to make sure it's 12 inches because that's what you got to have to be regulation then clamp these in place using just a bar clamp then I measured one and a half inches or one three quarter inches excuse me from here to the center and then one and three quarter inches from up here down to that made a cross here drilled a hole through put my carriage bolts that goes through there to here with a washer and a wing nut so that I can adjust it filled in. Now I'm going to take the palm sander, sand all that down smooth. I'm going to go around all the corners and, and kind of round those off a little bit, smooth it out. Just make sure there's no pointy stuff on it. With this particular set of boards, when I go to lay out, I'm going to be laying this out with my frame and square. Then I'll go around and use painter's tape, not masking tape, painter's tape, because it pulls away easier and it won't tear your paint up. Uh, I'm just drawing out a simple line, something I can put my tape to. So the width of my tape is going to be a little over an inch wide. So that's going to make one inch all the way around of natural wood that I'll leave. And then when I spray this thing, all the paint will go around it. When I remove the tape, then you'll see this nice uh, layer of natural wood. Now I could go back over the area that I left natural wood and paint it a different color to make a stripe going around it of a different color. But with these, I'm kind of leaving it natural and simple. So I'm just going out and laying out my lines, then I'll tape it off, and then I'll be ready to spray. This board's dry. It's ready to go. These are the decals that I ordered online. You can find these on just Google search, your decals. You know how many U.S. Army decals and stickers are probably out there? It was really hard to find one this size. This is actually the only one that I found on one website. Uh, and these ran me about $20 a piece. Don't get small stickers and put them on a big board. It's just going to look chintzy. It's not going to look right. Uh, take your time. Look around. Make sure you find the right decals because once you put it on there, it's on there. Anyway. I'm going to make some lay lines on where I want this so that it's perfectly centered and it's not cockeyed one way or the other. Um, I'll show you a trick. When I go to clear coat these, these boards to seal the sticker and the paint and all that and protect it, I'm going to show you a neat little trick that will help a lot of you um, with some of the aggravations of decals bubbling up and, and your paint almost reactivating and becoming wet again. A lot of times you can get your paint to bubble. You have to use the right kind of stuff and you have to use two different kinds. I'll show you how to do that.
So I'm going to switch gears on you here just a little bit. At the end of this video, you're going to see the finished products of two different boards. I know I started out with U.S. Army boards, but those are pretty simple. So I'm going to show you some of the diversity and some of the, uh, the ways that you can really get creative with these boards, one of which I decoupage completely uh, onto the board a bunch of pistol targets and, uh, and used a decal on that one as well. And then the next one, I hand painted a scene behind the decal uh, just using regular old acrylic paints and some spray paint both of which are getting clear coated and protected. Always clear coat and protect your boards. Uh, how much and how thick you want it to be is totally up to you. But the trick that I told you about to protect your artwork. Uh, in the beginning I started out just trying to roll or brush on a liquid clear coat and I found that it re-emulsifies the paint. It will cause the paint to bubble up and it will also cause bubbles in your decals or your decoupage, whichever one you're doing it will make anything that you've put on that board bubble up because it soaks in and it gets it wet there's nothing to protect it yet it's still going to soak in liquid so the trick is to take a spray can of clear coat spray on two good coats of clear coat don't soak it just lightly hit it because again we're trying to avoid anything soaking into the paper or the paint spray on two coats let that cure it usually takes about 24 hours then go back and roll on or brush on a liquid clear coat to give it a good thick layer to protect it. Thanks for watching. Thanks for liking this video. Thanks for subscribing. And feel free to share on social media. Uh, I'm on Twitter and Facebook. I'm not on Instagram because I'm not 16 years old. Uh, but in any event, I really appreciate the views, you guys. I'll try and keep the videos coming more frequent. I apologize for it taking a while. Life gets crazy.